Welcome to Tech to Tech presented by Kaizen, where we will explore common cleaning questions and answers. Let's get started. I would like to introduce Kaizen Zone, Beth Bivens. Thank you, William. Today in our solvent replacement series, we are going to discuss azeotropes and what they are um, and why they're important. So azeotropes are one of my very favorite things in chemistry um, because they're unique mixtures of liquids that have a, a constant boiling point. Um, so the, the general definition is, um, as you can read there, a mixture of two or more liquids that boils at a constant temperature at a given pressure and shows the same concentration and composition in both the liquid and vapor phases. Um, and so the boiling point of an azeotrope could be higher or lower than that of its individual components. And it comes from the Greek words boiling without changing. So um, each um, blend of, AZ of solvents or liquids, it's a unique um, ratio of the two, and each, each one has its own composition. So they're very, very cool in chemistry. Um, so what are some examples of azeotropes? Um, so there are, all, there are hundreds and thousands of azeotropes. If you look in chemistry tech, textbooks and handbooks, you can see um, there are probably three, five, three to 5,000 different azeotropes um, of different, different types of um, fluids. But today um, we're going to focus on just the non-flammable azeotropes, um, which are blends of a non-flammable fluorinated fluid with a flammable chlorinated fluid or an alcohol. And there are, like I said, flammable azeotropes like IPA and cyclohexanone is a popular azeotrope that people use for cleaning. Um, but today we're going to focus on the non-flammable ones. So below are a few examples. You can have a, a hydrofluoroolefin and methanol azeotrope with a boiling point, as you can see, that's lower than methanol, but a little bit higher than the HFO. Um, HFE, a hydrofluoroether, and trans 12 dichloroethylene form an azeotrope. Also, hydrofluoroethers, trans 12 dichloroethylene, and isopropyl alcohol form azeotropes. And then hydrochlorofluoroolefins um, with trans 12 dichloroethylene uh, form azeotropes. And uh, also, um, for things that require a higher boiling point, you can combine modified alcohols in the right ratio to get an azeotrope. So why consider azeotropes when looking for solvent replacements? Um, a lot of the solvent uh, blends that are used today that are being discontinued and phased out are azeotropes, um, like the various Novec uh, 71 IPA, DE, DA, um, and 72 DE and DA, 73 DE, and Vertrell MCA. So why is that important? Because if you're using an azeotrope now, it's, a, it's good to replace it with another azeotrope to ensure the same uh, cleaning performance and the same worker safety. And I will explain what I mean by worker safety in the next couple slides. So why is it important? Um, like I mentioned earlier, the components cannot be separated by simple distillation. They, have, they form a sort of a molecular bond that keeps them together. And um, so when you make an azeotrope of a flammable and a non-flammable material, um, they're always non-flammable, as long as the non-flammable component is in there in the right concentration to keep it non-flammable. Um, the comp composition doesn't shift. So like in a vapor degreaser over here on the right, um, as it's boiling and condensing and coming back through the process, um, this is all a continuous thing and the solvent is the same composition forever and ever. Um, an azeotrope ensures consistent cleaning and worker safety because it's not going to turn flammable and you won't have different cleaning results based on what the composition of the product is. So what are the benefits? Uh, I mentioned it a little bit already, but you know they're consistent they're, and they clean effectively. You can recycle them in a distillation system and reuse. Sometimes um, materials that aren't azeotropes come out of a distillation system at a different composition than they went in and may or may not work as well. They can be used as carrier solvents for adhesives and other, other things, um, lubricants. Sometimes if you use a non-azeotrope blend, um, they evaporate at a different rate and that can cause problems and they remain safe for use over the long haul. 
So if you are looking at alternatives to the products that are being discontinued or um, some other reason that you're needing to replace a solvent, um, a lot of things are advertised as azeotrope-like. And I would say for these to proceed with caution because the composition doesn't stay the same. So things that are labeled as azeotrope-like or near azeotrope can become flammable or the cleaning performance can degrade. Um, and I, I'd ask you, um, if, if this is how it's labeled, you should ask the supplier for flammability data over time. So if they've uh, monitored the flash point over time as the solvent is boiling or evaporating, that would be useful to have. So in conclusion, um, azeotropes are blends of solvents whose compositions do not change over time. Um, I have, I like to describe them as conjoined twins, but um, they're very difficult to separate. So under normal operating conditions, um, they will not separate. And just um, for reference, at Kaizen, we have um, a blend of an HCFO and trans 1,2-dichloroethylene that's an azeotrope, a true azeotrope with a boiling point of 48 degrees C, and our modified alcohol, which is used in vacuum vapor degreasing, is also an azeotrope. So a couple, a few questions. How do I know if the solvent blend I'm using is an azeotrope? Um, well, if you have analytical equipment, you can run um, a GC over time. You can either let it sit out or boil it in a um, a, a distillation apparatus or a vapor degreaser, or you can ask your supplier for that information. Um, what are risks associated with using solvent blends that are not azeotropes? Um, like I mentioned earlier, they can, if they're labeled as non-flammable, they can become flammable over time. They, they, their cleaning performance can change. Their solvency properties can change. Um, lots of things that you just don't know what will happen over time. Uh, why are the boiling points of some azeotropes lower than the individual components? Uh, this is due to, uh, like I said, a, a molecular um, bonding of, of the, the two materials that causes the heat of vaporization to be lower, which lowers the boiling point. So you don't to need to put as much heat into it to get it to boil. How easy or difficult is it to break an azeotrope? Um, it's pretty difficult. You'd have to have really, really high temperature. Um, sometimes um, pressure can break the azeotrope, but it, it would have to be a super unusual circumstance um, for that to happen. It doesn't happen um, just easily. So that's all I have. Um, thank you very much for your time, and I'll turn it back over to you, William. Thanks, Beth. Thank you all for watching this Tech to Tech session. If you would like to discuss this topic further or have any questions not answered in the session, please contact a local Kaizen regional manager or send an email to tech, the number two, tech at kaizen.com. We'll have someone follow up with you as soon as possible. And if you like this video, be sure to follow us on our social media platforms for more expert cleaning content.